Hello, hello, my name is Yael. Welcome to my channel. In this video, we are covering the astrology from today, April 30th, until around May 7th, all right? So we're going to go through Pallas entering into Taurus, happening on April 30th, the new moon solar eclipse in Taurus, which is a partial solar eclipse. You can also find another video that goes way more in depth on this on my channel, which literally says new moon Taurus solar eclipse, okay? I recorded this video, I want to say, over a week ago, so that's why it's in here. We have May 2nd, Venus is entering Aries, and on May 3rd, Jupiter is sextiling Pluto retrograde. So those are the things we're going to cover in this video, and then we're going to talk about the rest of Taurus season in another one. So I love you so much. Enjoy! So let's go to Palace. I don't know if I'm saying that right. April 30th. We have, I feel like it's not palace, whatever. Palace entering Taurus, which is beautiful. It's really beautiful because Mercury also like belongs in, belongs in Gemini. Juno, very happy in Pisces. Um, palace, <laughs> fuck. Very, also very happy in Taurus because palace, I feel like that's not how you say it, but whatever. It represents your talents in the arts, wisdom, defense, intuition, justice, and artisan endeavors. It's how you temper your instincts, noticing patterns in larger pictures, helpful for, helpful for creativity and problem solving. So pattern recognition and other ways of knowing is what Palace is. It's like, it's like Mercury, but it's not so much about the information per se, but the patterns that you see and other ways of knowing that are not mercurial so that are not like rooted in reality right whereas neptune is like ways it's extra sensory processing it's like sensing the ghosts the spirits you know the divine and all of those things those beautiful beautiful beings um palaces pattern recognition it's the so it's like the not necessarily software but it's the puzzle pieces the puzzle pieces in other ways of knowing when it goes into Taurus, we're focusing on sensuality, right? And and seeking beauty in our thoughts, which is beautiful, right? On the same day, we have... Um, wait, tell me about Pallas going into Taurus first and foremost. Just one card. Just one card for Pallas going into Taurus. I don't know. Pallas? 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 I don't know. Justice interesting pattern recognition and other ways of knowing sensuality and seeking beauty in thought justice some of you guys might get conversations somebody might reach out to you and and say something that you that you literally never thought that they would say in a million years what, what tell me about one more for the palace going into taurus ten of swords yeah it's feeling very karmic it's feeling very Maybe understanding your own karma. I mean, during this period, Mercury is going to be in its shadow period. Because it does go retrograde on May 10th. Pattern recognition and other ways of knowing. This is a, a lot about your karma. With death, ruled by Scorpio, which rules karma. This is a lot about your karma and seeing your patterns. Justice. It's one more card, Spirit. One more card for Palace entering Taurus. Two of Wands. Planning. Foresight. 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 How do I need to adjust? How do I need to move with a higher mind? Because I'm really brought to those birds up there. Um, with the Tower. So it's literally like a breakthrough. A breakthrough of. The war, the inner war inside of you. Yeah, seeking beauty and thought. It's like, I don't want to... This is also problem solving, absolutely. Like, I don't want to add something in my life that is not... That isn't beautiful. Like, I just want to create beauty in my life. And that's not just in, like, I want to put flowers everywhere or something like that, which is beautiful. But real beauty what beauty means to you what beauty means to your soul justice in the ten of swords like i really do feel like all also this is definitely some people like saying sorry saying sorry saying sorry because they are understanding their own patterns honestly okay so 
We have the new moon solar eclipse in Taurus, which is partial new moon solar eclipse happening April 30th. This is very, very important. I'm feeling this. Um, I'll probably do another video on this just on the new moon solar eclipse itself. But for now, let's get a, I'm feeling like a little bit of a beautiful. Okay, Spirit of the Most High, what do we need to know about the new moon solar eclipse in Taurus? Cracked open, rock bottom, surrender to the alchemy of life. I keep hearing the song and I'm trying to think what it is. I hear, here you go again. Okay, I need to connect. What is this cracked open about for the new moon solar eclipse? Resurrecting, seedlings, catapult. It makes sense though. We have the Justice, the Ten of Swords, and fuck, what was the last card? Oh, what is the brain? I don't even remember. But that's on the same day as this, right? New Moon Solar Eclipse. Loosen your grip. Coping mechanisms, density, addiction. Let God in. So for a lot of you guys, this is going to be a faded change where it's like, I, like, you can't do anything. Like, you can't do anything but surrender at this point. You can't do anything but let go of what is not working in your life. Of letting go of that thing that you keep trying again and again and again and again and again and again and again, and again, and again and beating a dead horse. Like, tell me about this new moon solar eclipse, please. New moons are beginnings, right? Eclipses mean that it's very faded. <laughs> in Taurus, a new, completely new cycle in. New moon solar eclipse. Earth pulsing, pulse of the mother, slow down time in nature. You know, I really feel like you might be wanting to drive on a highway when you really need to take the scenic route. Like I said before, this tour season feels a lot about the physical body and realizing that there has been a toll on the physical body in terms of stress over the past how long in your life that it's really needing to tend to. Like, look at these... This person is chilling in nature, being rejuvenated, allowing. This is not a body posture of control. This is let it go. Like, realize that it's okay to be on the receiving end of needing help. And cracked open. Final messages for this new moon solar eclipse in Taurus. Yeah, we have wait. It's not yet time. Things are being woven. And I remember, soul plan, the faded life versus the destiny life. And double mission, light worker, star seed, serve the world by being you. At the bottom of the deck. When worlds collide is what I'm feeling. When worlds collide. Um, let me just hop in here. Definitely water here. Like, I remember there's something to do with the body, with the body and the cellular memories and the nourishment of the internal landscape, the internal earth body. It's like going, wanting to do something, but then being like not ready, like not emotionally prepared to harvest too much. This really just feels like like I said before, the mind wants to run, the mind wants to go, but things are still being like crafted. I'm seeing somebody knitting something, like wanting to wear the sweater that's like only halfway ready. Like, whoa. What is this about? What is this about? 
Let's go for the magical spell cards. Okay, what do we need to know? <laughs> Tell me more, please, about this new moon solar eclipse in Taurus. Dream sweet, sleep deep. Sleep that's deep and lasts till morn. Wondrous dreams for days reborn. It's a lot about, like... Hold on. Like settling, settling, like settling, settling the restlessness. I mean, it's going to be happening while Mercury's in Gemini, so. You're settling the need to be right. Um, tell me more. Justice. It's like karma is doing her thing. Karma is doing her thing. Definitely this this re this reset that is so beyond confirmation burps that is so beyond how you would like your life to be playing out right now. There are so many things that you are connected to especially because now you are so much more expanded in awareness. So your energy field is more connected to the collective more now than other ever. Interesting I just said ever. Um, it's like people need to line up things need to line up things need to line up some truths need to come out tell me about this new moon solar eclipse things need to be sorted out cleaned out why am i just like <laughs> regulated is what i'm hearing sandstorm when i hear sandstorm harvest as the waves of the ocean are infinite as the trees in the forest grow tall let my work now bring me to harvest i am ready to receive my all emphasis on receiving remember it's like wait things are being woven Things are being, the soil is being created, recreated, recycled. That's why you're feeling so much tur turmoil in yourself because they're being repositioned inside of you to create space. A rebound effect is what I'm hearing. Some of you guys might feel pulled back in some way. Like like I'm going back. You're not. You're going back because maybe a dream. Or you're slowing down because a dream only comes through in that kind of receptive energy of I don't need to run. I don't need to chase. Grace. Yeah. Grace. Blessing. Come to me. Come to me to set me free. Having grace for yourself. Letting yourself have fun again. Letting yourself be enough now and understanding that if you keep running and running and rushing and, and I'm saying I almost said ruining, that energy is not, it's not sustainable and you're missing out on living. Trust. Trust. It's like the divine, the, 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 blah, 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 blah. the divine is doing the work. Basically, it's like you got to get out of the way. And that doesn't mean do nothing, but it means understand when you are truly called from inside, from the divine's voice inside, based off of your, your energy capacity, right? To do and what not to do. You're getting better. You're being more confident in understanding the assignment. Yeah, knowledge, like understanding the assignment of what is being asked of me and what is not. Like safe home, it's safe for me to slow down. And what does this resistance of, to slowing down really mean to me, right? Because Taurus, sensuality, is about slowing down. It's the bull. The bull takes its time. And it's very, very, like, it can go forever because it takes its time. 
So it's definitely a new a new cycle of energetic approach as well that is fueled by this desire to to have to possess and not in the scorpio possessive way but in a like i literally have like this these are my this is what i have like values and stuff like this um yeah one more card one more card with the viking oracle for this new moon solar eclipse And then we will move on. Final message, please. Spirit guides of the most high. Divine. <laughs> For this Taurus new moon solar eclipse. I really don't want to get like a pen on me. Interesting. I've never seen this one yet. Number 10. Even that number, right, is um, karmic. How do you say this? It's called now this. Interesting. It's pronounced now this. Break free of obsessions. A new love will come into your life. You need less than you think. Be wise about separating needs and wants. Be wise about separating needs from wants. Moderation is the key. Love, but not too much. Burn, but not burn yourself. But do not burn yourself. Attract, but not so you cannot be free. Desire, but not without, but without obsession. I am now this. Now this is one of the runes of the elder Futark. Now this concerns itself with the nature of desire and explores need. The design of the room am I good? Rune resembles two sticks being rubbed together to cause fire. And the word can mean need fire. What's at the bottom of the deck here? That fire. What you need will be served. Definitely what I was saying about like understanding that you're a part of more than just you. So what you want isn't always what is best for you and the collective, you know? Now this warned about obsessions around needs and desires, particularly in regard to love and possessions. The Norse saw the potential for greed in both areas. While we must, while we need both love and a certain number of possessions, we must be discerning and ask ourselves what is necessary and what is excess. Another question to consider is this, what does an insatiable drive for riches or a bottomless hunger for love actually cost? Because of its association with love, now this is also commonly used in love magic. Women were said to draw the rune on the back of a piece of a jewelry or hide it in their clothing to attract a particular lover. As a rune governed by fire, now this was said to increase passion or alternatively temper it. Interesting, y'all. And the other side, right, we have this kanaz, or I don't know how to say this yet. Um, kana, kanaz. Kanazi. Kanazi says the way forward is illuminated be the change you wish to see don't just talk embody your message to the world no one can know everything so learn from trusted others or elders by illuminating our shadows we deeply or we understand ourselves and our behaviors more deeply yeah reveals to us the knowledge we need to be at our best so this is what's going to be happening for this new moon taurus solar eclipse right it is solar that's why there's so much fire here it's not um it's not a it's not a lunar eclipse it's more about our drive like what we're attracted to with that solar energy of right we talked about obsessions and stuff like that in the beginning things that we think we want but are really really hurting us when we would be better and more peaceful with less so now we're gonna look into <laughs> this is so long but it is what it is I'm going to put timestamps for all of this. So just leave and come back to whatever you want when you want it. Okay, May 2nd. We have Venus is going into Aries. So here we are. Instead of being, you know, pulled towards and attracted by... I feel like my voice is raspy right now. 
pulling instead of being in the energy that we are now which is like pulling towards and being attracted to pisces like all encompassing love aries is like whoa 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 like i'm gonna do me you do you like it's focused on you know what we've had for this this airy season what we just came out of um individualization feeling strong in who you are feeling like you are putting energy and time and dedicating your money your your energy what it what really is your currency is your energy towards like building yourself as an individual what you do want to do with yourself um committing to um communion because venus can be like uh you and i because it it does rule libra so it is about a coming together of sorts coming together with yourself which is taurus your body yourself who i am like i love myself like i value myself libra energy coming together and valuing others um all of this yeah finding figuring out like with the venus and aries it feels like getting to see this new and involve you in a in a group in a group of people um staying staying single like singular in in a sea of others like that's what matters more to you is you liking you right you establishing you you having courage these are things that are going to be highlighted what do we need to know for venus going into aries on may 2nd we have the sun you valuing your happiness. What makes me happy? How long do I need the sun to shine on me in order to feel like I'm growing? What do I need? What kind of nourishment do I need in order to feel like I'm growing? It's illuminated um, the value of like who you are as well here with Venus going into Aries. Venus going to Aries. We have Ace of Swords clear, clearly seeing yourself. Clearly understanding, whoa, what you, <laughs> whoa, because the magician, this is beautiful energy. Venus going to Aries is hearing chop, chop, like chop, chop, scissors. You're going to know exactly what you need to do. Like you're going to, you're going to, okay, this is what I'm getting. You're going to sense very clearly whether, where you put yourself, where you empower yourself to place yourself is whether that energy is pulling to you or repulsing you. This is like, I know what I need to do for my happiness. This is magic. This is pure magic. Pure empowerment. With the bottom of the deck, three of pentacles, literally. With the coming together, I'm very, very aware of how I'm coming forward. The individual in the group, right? The individual in the group, what I have to offer. Like the individual in the group, Venus going into Aries. New ideas. Some of you guys like are really, I mean, Aries isn't really the sign of like, ideas per se but it is about leadership like how can i champion myself here fuck <laughs> oh my gosh um let's see what what else do we need what else is going to be the theme for us for venus going into aries da -da 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 -da. prosperity as this tree grows so fine, so strong, so fine, may I, so may I prosper from the universal divine. Divine guidance. Yeah, some of you guys are truly going to understand how to create something here. The Ace of Swords and the Magician. This is you. Okay, spirit. I'm here. Okay, spirit. Okay, spirit. Okay, spirit. Illuminated truth. And you're, you don't even second guess it. You're like, boom, let me work my magic. Boom, let me work my magic confidence literally boom let me work my magic and look at that it's like praying like connecting courage by earth and air water and fire let my confidence take light burn brighter and look there's earth air far far what far <laughs> fire and water magician has all of those right here okay i'm getting it makes sense though because venus going into aries means that it, it that's that wheel the turning of the wheel for venus right venus going into aries is the start it's the start so it's i'm bringing forward all all that venus in me has learned over going from aries to pisces because now that's the restart of venus's cycle that's what it is
sensuality. Safe travels. This is giving me, you guys feel like your freedom flowing from far away. I dance, I love, I laugh, I play. Literally, confidence to be yourself, to show your magic, to really be an individual. To desire the self. Because the sun is also going to be in Taurus, right? Um, Yeah, that's cool. I like that. Let's go on to... Now we're looking at Jupiter, sextile, Pluto. Sextile is an aspect where there are some challenges, but should you rise to the challenge, you will reap the rewards and you will be very happy that you did. Just take some organization. Um, um, sorry. So let's just get a clear, clear. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of have a headache today. Maybe it's because I just blast the symbols by my ears. Couldn't be that. All right. Spirit of the Most High, what do we need to know about Jupiter, sextile, Pluto? Jupiter's energy, first of all, is expansive, right? It grows. It grows. It grows, it grows, it grows. That can be positive and that can also be negative. Like it grows anything it touches, right? Sextile Pluto. which is going to be retrograde, which will be retrograde at this time. Pluto is the truth bearer, the, the sting of the scorpion, right? The truth, the truth, the truth will piss you off, but then it'll set you free. And it's at 28 degrees. They're sextiling exactly at 28 degrees of each. 28 degrees means that it is a 24 is Pisces plus four that makes it cancer. Okay. So it's a cancer degree, right? 25 is Aries, 26 is Taurus, 23, 27, 28. Yeah, okay, so a cancer degree. Um, that just means that the energy of maybe wanting and desiring, um, you know, to feel, to feel cozy, to feel safe as we explore this is going to be heightened. Anything that makes us feel like home. Tell me, spirit, about Jupiter sextiling Pluto retrograde for May 3rd. We have Earth. Learning how to be human in the world, but not of it. Look at that. Even just there, like in, in their own little crab shell. In their own little crab shell. Jupiter sextile Pluto retrograde. Karmic relationships, Orion energy, polarity, soul growth, and conflict. Yeah, because Pluto, right? It's gonna be in Capricorn, so we're still we're we're still sensing Pluto on an on a very large scale because one is a huge ass planet. Well, it's not actually that big, but it has a very large influence because it's so far away, it takes so long to travel around. Two, it's in Capricorn, so we're seeing this on a large scale on the world scale on the word world stage. Can I speak? Yes. Okay, so that's what karmic relationships are. It's understanding from this world to that world. Like we're on two different worlds, but we learn from each other. Learning how to be human in the world, but not of it. This feels like we're expanding past and through the the conflict, the, the, the trauma, the trial, the error, like where we were wrong, where, you know what I mean? Pluto isn't, isn't good feelings. It's like, ugh, it's, it's yucky. It's very karmic. Um... It's like embracing, interesting, bracing, bracing, like our polarity, realizing like I'm not, you know, I have been, I have been mean and I have been nice, right? I've been both. I have helped my own progression and I have halted my own progression. It's bringing that together and expanding through it because learning to be human in the world, but not of it is duality, right? And the karmic relationship says polarity, which is duality. So Jupiter, sextile, Pluto, retrograde, deep cellular healing, Arcturus energy, physical and emotional healing. Yeah, see, this is literally an angel. <clears throat> it's giving angel vibes. So it's except, like Jupiter, very connected to the angelic realm. Let me put this back. Uh, let me go back. Oh, I can go down. <laughs> We're going for a ride. Whatever, it's all good very connected to the to the angel realm so it's access accessing your divinity using like utilizing the divine and your soul to 
to move through. I'm seeing like this, this hall of fame. I kept feeling hall of fame. It's like we're walking. It feels like what year is it actually? Like what year is it actually? It doesn't feel like 2022. It feels like we're walking through the hall of fame of our life. Because it's an accelerated ascension. It's like, okay, we're watching home videos of our entire life and feeling anything that we didn't feel so that we can integrate it and move through it. Physical and emotional healing with Jupiter sextile Pluto retrograde. And it's all very internalized, right? Yeah, literally. Inner authority, intuition, turn your gaze within. What did I say? All paths lead home. Inside. It's all very internalized because Pluto's retrograde. So it's internal expansion. Big picture thinking. Plates, energy, visionary, inspired ideas. Exactly. Exactly. It's like when I turn inwards, I realize that there's no wrong, there's no wrong path that I could take. There really isn't. There really isn't. Okay, let's see. Final message for Jupiter sextile Pluto retrograde. Final message for Jupiter sextile Pluto retrograde. Two is two the two. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, wow. We have some power energy here. Some power energy here. So Jupiter sextile Pluto retrograde is going to have the effect of I'm um, seeing like you know uh, when something welts on your body ah that's what it is like that's what it is is what it feels like you're really gonna understand that's the thing like that is the, the thing inside of you that's that time like that's that period that's when the shift occurred that's when i lost myself that's when i confirmation burps that's when i believed lies that turned out to be poison in my body that's when i didn't let go of this thing and it turned out to something bigger that's what it feels like um oh gee Let us see. Okay. And we have this at the bottom of the deck. Beautiful. I'm hearing limelight. No longer captive in your own self. Let me see. Number 15. Okay. So this is Elhas. Be courageous. Fear is a necessary part of courage. Differentiate between what is yours and what belongs to others. Respect others' property and boundaries. Step forward and do what is right, even if others do not. Develop deeper connections with the plants and animals who share this planet. Interesting. So this is about Earth. So we're examining the role of fear. Yeah, Jupiter, sextile, Pluto is like, okay, so, you know, here's those times in my life. That's what it is. That's that wealth that I see when I started to be afraid. When I started operating more out of fear than... Um, encourage right what the hell sorry can you see this honestly don't even care oh whatever okay when you started operating more out of fear and fur furage oh my god am i good and oh my gosh speak this is powerful. This is the elk. This is over. Okay. If we act. Oh, that was right. Okay. So ask us to be courageous and examine the role of fear within that context. If we act when we are genuinely unafraid, can we actually be considered courageous? Or does courage mean that when we, that we take action, when we feel fear, overcoming such fears is at the heart of this, of this rune. With its encouragement, we trust that we will be protected by something higher than ourselves. Jupiter, Zeus, right? That you can expand past what has been eating you up inside. That you can really, you know, see where the wealth is inside of you. And suck the blood out of it is what it feels like. Suck the venom out of it, you know? Like, move through that. Move through the incineration. Move through the fire process. To, to come out on top. Okay? We have faith. We may feel fear, but we bravely do what we believe to be at right anyway. Where Thurisaz is sacred to the god Thor and Perthro to the Norns, 
Elhaz is ruled by the mighty Valkyries, who rewarded those who fought bravely in the battle and died. That's beautiful. So it's like being a fierce warrior. And speaking of Thor, he's he's also here. Um, for Jupiter sextile Pluto retrograde, it's the time for action has come. Hesitate no more. Bust that rut. Protect those weaker than yourself. You can be both forceful and sensitive. You are loved and protected, and Thor has his shield of arm around you. So Pluto, for me, I'm just I don't know whether it's actually because I have a Scorpio moon, so my emotional processing in my you know intuitive senses, which is ruled by the moon, some of them is ruled by Pluto. When there are Pluto aspects, I really, really, really can sense like the entities that are like lower vibrational so much more and just more you know entities in general so this might be you know sucking the venom out of that is necessary for you because then you are no longer feeding the low vibrational entities so during this time jupiter sextile pluto retrograde it you're the reason why these are both staying protected is because you might be afraid of what becomes unearthed within you and it's within you it's not outside of you okay it's not outside of you as within so without um He's also very connected to the chariot, right? So, which is the light in the dark. So long as you neglect and pretend like the the plutonic aspects don't exist within you, your your help your your chariot. Interesting, I said house. Your house yourself is not going to run smoothly. There's always going to be a leak. There's always going to be you know um, something going wrong in the home because you're only utilizing one force. And when one horse is working, you're literally, that's exhausting. That horse is going to break down, right? And then it's going to be gray instead of a beautiful balance of black, white forces. Um, so yeah, you can feel safe knowing that Thor's might will shield you as you move ahead into the unknown. This is beautiful. Final message, please, for Jupiter sextile Pluto retrograde. Final message. What is it that Thor and Elhaz want to say? Yeah, Five of Wands. You're really going to be able to see the battlefield. Like, you're going to be entering the battlefield of... Like, Pluto kind of represents, like, the remnants of the battlefield, in my opinion. The remnant of the forces. You know, it's, it's tapping into your own self, your own patterns, and how you are plugged into the lower forces because they both exist and i'm not saying like oh my god you're human basically you're human right um you're human but what's in the what's in here hidden the butterfly the evolution is always like tangible it's always there tell me please thor and elhaz what do you want to say for jupiter sextile pluto retrograde Page of Wands and the Ten of Cups. Like, what are you fighting for? Understanding that, like, facing facing your own demons, facing the own characters that you, you know, continuously think about, continuously conjure up. I don't know if it's just a Gemini thing, but my mind is constantly, literally making, like, arguments for nothing. Anyways, it's, it's like, what the fuck? Like, I gotta, I'd be like, whoa, come back down to Earth. Nothing's even happening right now, right? This is very the past. Um... The past that it continues to exist in the present by us inebriating, so feeling like suffocated in our own patterns. That's what I'm seeing. Pluto rules the depths. It's like coming up, feeling suffocated by your own patterns. I'm seeing somebody like hurry to the surface of the water to breathe again. That's Jupiter sextile Pluto retrograde is like, I feel like you're going to be so tired of yourself. And I always say this, you can't make a change in your life. I'm fucking screaming, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> I always say this, you can't make a change in your life um, until you get so sick and tired of yourself. Really. Then this applies to repeating past scenarios in your mind as well as what I really came into a conclusion of today. Or just repeating things that have happened in your life. And absolutely, like, you, you need to do that. You need to go through that. This comes back down to trusting yourself and realizing that, like, if my body's asking me for something, that's something I need. That's something I need. And to let go of the judgments for that. 
But in order to really trust yourself and to be full with yourself, you have to be transparent, which is Pluto energy of what is this really coming from? From the depths of my soul, depths of my subconscious, what is this really coming from? And so this was this is what is going to happen. The five of wands, I see you being like, you have to face this. You have to like be courageous to face this, to understand what your part is playing as well, right? I saw a quote on, on somebody's community page on YouTube and it was like, at first we, uh, what was it, fuck? It was like, in the beginning we blame others. And then as we evolve, we blame ourselves. And then as we get it, we blame no one. And that is so difficult. Like I have goosebumps. That is that is the true journey of expansion. I want to cry because it's not like light things. Oh, that person cut me off in traffic. Then I blame them and then I blame myself and then, I'm, and then I blame no one. No, this is like applied to things that eat you up that eat your eat you up that eat you up that feed off of you right and this could be connected to um i just want you to know that like you are not enough you are not alone like remember i was making that i did that video about like this upcoming week for the collective i'm like the five of swords was up there the five of cups like i'm with you in the trenches i hope you know that like i'm right here feeling it um we're, we're all together i love you but fuck I tangent so much and then I forget. But basically what I want to say here, Spirit, please redirect me to what is really important here. Is that you're going to understand like, hmm. I don't know who you are here, but you're one of them. You're just going to be so over it. Like so over it. So over it. That you say, I want something else for myself. And it's only when you are willing and desiring and capable with whatever energy level you had to get to. That you finally say enough, enough is enough. I choose myself. I choose myself. I'm not going to fight to prove, to do whatever, whatever, like they, whatever these people or these energies around me are trying to get me to do. It's a distraction. It's a distraction. Because why are you fighting? Are you in an actual war? You know what I mean? Like, why are you fighting to prove your point? Why are you, why are you doing that? What does that give you, right? The, the true, like, um, what is the right word? Like, example, I guess, of, you know, heaven and hell is that hell are um hell and heaven are here and they are what we choose to like embody right heaven and hell heaven is joy it's connectivity it's love it's abundance and these are energies hell is is um shame it's it's grief it's like ongoing grief okay that's it feels hellish right it feels hellish anything that is draining and draining and draining is hellish just by nature because what are these these are energy frequencies and there are low and en energies like high energies low energies feed off of these things and it's not to be fucking worried remember who you are remember who you are this is your mind this is your body this is your experience okay your power is within you that's why it's like all paths lead home within you you are the answer god spirit source universe is within you um but really, like, it's not outside of you, right? It's not outside of you. And that's what this is. It's relinquishing the, oh, it's outside of me. No, 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 no. Page of Wands here. Um, tick, tick, boom. It, it, like, this is Jupiter sextile Pluto retrograde feels like it's time. It's time. And what is it time for? The other card we have here. Oh, I didn't look at this. I feel like that's kind of important at this point right now. What is it time for? Ten of Cups. To make your own to make it your own, to make it your own, to pull the story, pull your spirit, pull your energy back and make it your own. And this doesn't mean isolate yourself. No, but it means choose your fucking happiness. Like Pluto comes and destroys for your greater good, for your greater good, right? Let's read the, did I read this one? I don't think so. I feel like now is the perfect part for it part time for it to be read though that's time blah, 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 blah. yeah the skills and gifts you have within are your greatest treasure they will never be stolen that's what this is we're also learning with the because we've been through so much collectively that like we're trying so hard to let go of paranoia expecting people to just take from you i get that i totally get that so we're learning to to marry and balance and start new cycles for ourselves where it's like i need i need different like i need different like this is what it is about Taurus energy, about realizing what your needs and wants and desires are. What you really need, you know, is connection that is sacred, that is sacred, that is not malicious. You know, that's what, interesting, my thing, my 
phone just like lit up that's what you really need right you don't really need to be fucking rich as shit like i don't know like famous and all of these things you don't really need that like what does your soul really need babe babes what does your soul really need because nourish that and everything else will flourish okay again like that heaven and hell analogy hell is living merely only from ego from i want this for what it looks like i'm completely rejecting what it may actually feel like in your soul how it actually resonates with you okay Pay attention to the way you view the links between personal power and wealth. Prosperity needs to be developed over time and then shared. What did I just say? What did I just say? This is Fehu. So it literally means cattle. And the symbol itself resembles the horns on cattle. Interesting because, you know, Taurus and the bull. The Vikings who traveled quite a bit had to carry portable forms of wealth with them as they traded or explored. Their wealth, therefore, wasn't me measured just in gold. Cattle and other livestock, for instance, represented a type of mobile wa wealth wash, <laughs> wealth wa that was literally on the hoof. So this rune is an apt symbol for the idea of prosperity within the Viking paradigm. I just realized that, you know, as we are ascending, as we are shifting, as we are really shifting paradigms, we really fucking are. We're no longer in like this age of, um, what is it? Like age of Pisces where like, which was ruled by, you know, like this love, this romantic, this beautiful, like flowery essence, like kind of vibe, which had a lot to do with like, um, no boundaries, like not no boundaries, but like learning the unhealthy boundaries, like trying to establish ourselves in that, which we did. Now we're in Aquarius where it's ruled by Saturn. Now we're like, let me build Saturn also is very connected to the soul, right? They all are, but I have a deep awe and respect for Saturn. Truly. Like I fuck with Saturn heavy because why am i crying like i'm so sensitive right now I, I'm, I'm thankful for it i'm thankful to be human i'm thankful to feel and that like i wouldn't want to not i don't know why i'm crying i feel like i'm crying because the the respect that i have for saturn is because of what i've been through saturn gives you wisdom and then passes you on to jupiter so that you can receive the blessings and the benefits from the wisdom that you have developed if we look at the way that it's you know in the sky um and just astrology wise astrologically and i really feel so strongly connected to saturn and it's very interesting because i'm not like a saturn ruled baby i'm not i have saturn in aries in my seventh house which is probably why i feel that heavy heavy karmic energy because the seventh house rules karma as well right because you think about libra which is the scales the justice who serves justice karma saturn Saturn and karma are like this. I bet you they're dating. I bet you they're dating. I don't know. I bet you they're married, Loki. I don't know. But it's like really, once you can really establish, it's like releasing that victimhood is very hard. It's very, very hard. It's very hard because it's soft, right? And I don't mean when you're like actually a victim. I'm not talking about those instances. I'm not talking about that. That's valid. I'm talking about when you choose to and i'm vic and i I've, I've done this you know and i still do this in my mind and i'm still working on this like i take full accountability for that where it's easier it's softer to the ego it's softer to the heart as well sometimes it's more even it's deeper than the ego sometimes where it's easier for yourself to only see what people have done to you versus how you contributed to that happening in order to feel soft in order to feel safe right that is Pisces world. Um, and I'm not saying like, oh my God, Pisces, blah, blah, blah. No, I could rip a hole into every single sign, every single sign. And I could literally put every single sign on a pedestal, right? We have all of the signs in all of us. I want you all to know that. You're not one. You're not one. You're all of them, right? We are whole. Anyways, I never want you to feel like if you're a Pisces sun watching this being like, why is she hating on me? No, this is just the energy. The energy don't lie. The energy is what the energy is. There's a yin and yang to all of it um yin yang is more masculine than feminine but like you don't know what i'm saying anyway so basically when you can finally release um immature ego tendencies i guess and this just comes with maturity this just comes with life experience right so don't b belittle yourself for not 
understanding if you don't okay there's there's such a difference between cognitively getting something and then embodying it and walking it like you talk it and there's a long period of time that has to pass before that really integrates into yourself i feel like it's like coming from the crown and then integrating all the way to the root where it's like i feel safe walking in this like i know all of it not knowing but more like i can explain it in my own way because people will explain their own individual ways but what is this even about we're talking about jupiter jupiter sextile pluto so pluto even like you know um the way that this is going it's giving a lot of jupiter gives me divinity it gives me divinity in the sense of what you what light how you help grow how you help grow others around you um because jupiter is a huge planet so it's it's less about me you know and more about us in terms of a lot of people have jupiter in the same sign right i have jupiter in aquarius um yeah and a lot of the generation around my age does i'm 23 turning 24 june 16th hey <laughs> shout out to me but yeah happy birthday to all of the aries and the tauruses love y'all um but yeah basically i'm saying that when you can get out of that victim mentality of anybody owing you shit if you okay so this is what it is nobody owes you anything if you haven't given them value first okay in a relationship, when you give value, people do kind of owe you things, okay? So that's, you know, that's what one way you can get stuck in the, the trauma response cycle of, you know, abuse and, and like the twin flame rhetoric. I hate that shit. I hate that. The real twin flame is yourself. It's you with yourself. Only when you unionize with yourself and spirit from within, do you actually understand what is meant for you, right? A little piece of hair. Anyways, um basically i just feel saturn very very strong i can't make a video without talking about saturn because karma's doing her thing out here she really is doing her thing out here and it's not always fun <laughs> it doesn't always feel good right so so fehu is also or fe fehu yeah is understanding like your skills and gifts right jupiter right let it, what did i say about how you expand how you help expand and he's like looking down which means that like there's a degree of humility doesn't mean that you should pretend like you're not as great as you are but again it's not it's like operating from the heart instead of the ego of like i'm amazing i graduated honors like congrats you know what i mean it's like what what kind of value are you actually bringing is interesting and it has to do with what you've learned throughout your life pluto the truths the painful truths which is very connected to saturn as well all right and that is the end of this segment we're going to discuss for part two of tour season 2022 check out part three that will be uploaded within a week when it's actually astrologically relevant be sure to like comment subscribe and stick around because there's plenty where this came from and i love you